El Pescador, Ambergris K, San Pedro, Belize. Uh, for those of you who've never been to Belize before, Belize is located right next to Guatemala and just south of Mexico on the uh, southeast end of the Yucatan Peninsula. And Ambergris K is just off Belize City. So to get here, you're actually going to fly on a you know, normal commercial flight to Belize City. And then you're going to hop on a little puddle jumper. Uh, and these planes are like 18 to 30 passenger. And that's how you fly into Ambergris K and the town of San Pedro. Now, San Pedro is just, you know, a little, little coastal city. And it's full of canals and dirt roads and a bunch of little hole-in-the-wall places. It's not super touristy. Uh, but it's definitely a, a fun little place that you can check out. Now, El Pescador is located on the north side of town. And the town is basically divided uh, north and south by one canal with a bridge. And you'll get really familiar with this because you'll be passing through this canal a lot if you're fishing. Especially if you're going to be fishing south uh, of, of the Kay. You'll be going through this thing pretty much every day. And that's kind of the, the inlet and outlet uh, for heading south because you're going to be protected by the reef uh, fishing all of the caves that are south of there. Here's a quick look at uh, the El Pescador website. And this is the view of the lodge from the end of the dock. And, uh, you know, you can see it's a, it's a pretty large property. There's uh, villas on the right-hand side and then the left-hand side. And then the main lodge is in the middle along with the pool and bar area. On the right hand side. Now, as far as the accommodations go, you got a couple different options. I stayed in the main lodge, which was more than suitable, and uh, everything was super nice and clean. Two stories, really good cold AC, no bugs of any of any kind that we had any issues with. Um, so if you got a, a wife that's worried about that, uh, no issues whatsoever. Everything was beyond expectations for uh, for being down there. Now, they do have uh, a private villa available. I, th I think there's actually more than one now. Um, and it's set up pretty nice, but I, I didn't stay there this time. But uh, basically, e every night, everyone has dinner together. And it's served kind of buffet style. And uh, they give out awards and talk about fishing and uh, what the conditions are like. It's a really good uh, group gathering. And uh, along with that is also a bar. Beer and cocktails are included with your stay, which is pretty rad. Uh, if you want some special import liquor, you gotta pay a little bit extra for it. But they got pool table, foosball table, and the pool is right in front of the bar, which is uh, great to hang out and relax after a long day of fishing, have a nice cocktail and some appetizers at the pool. So definitely worth uh, hanging out at. Now El Pesco is still obviously known for its saltwater fishing, but there is other things to do if your wife is not interested in fishing, and uh, you know there's excellent diving, snorkeling. Um, they have a whole list of things that are available to you if you don't want to go fishing. So make sure you check those out. They do vary from time to time and uh, weather permitting as well. One of the things I would highly recommend doing is uh, renting a golf cart from the lodge. There's plenty of places that you can go out and explore on the island. And uh, it's a good way to kind of get out of, uh, out of the lodge and, and uh, check things out. There's uh, Secret Speech to the north, which is a pretty famous place. And then uh, we found this place that's a little closer to the town called Truck Stop. And uh, it's a cool little uh, outdoor scene. You know, you can play uh, play bags. And uh, they typically had a live band on the weekend. So pretty fun little little cool place to hang out and just uh, get away. Although you should have fun, just uh, don't make sure you don't overdo it. Might end up being a really long day on the water the next day. So here's the fishing calendar. And uh, you kind of get an idea of when the migrations are. And I mean, this is gonna vary a little bit, but you get a pretty good idea. Uh, I came in the end of May, and this is one of their hotter months, obviously. Um, bonefish were definitely there, caught a lot of bonefish. Tarpon were around, didn't bite super well, uh, but they were definitely there. And we did not do any reef fishing whatsoever because Everything else is fishing pretty good. So these are the fly fishing recommendations for, for gear. Um, if you're not into fly fishing, you don't don't count this place out because you, you don't have to be an avid fly fisherman to come here. 
Now, if you're a fly fisherman, this is pretty much your dream location uh, to go fly fishing for sure. Um, I've done some fly fishing. However, I don't own a bunch of fly fishing gear and uh, I didn't really need to make the investment in some for this trip. Um, so I went with uh, just conventional gear. Now they list four different setups on here and you really don't need four. You basically need two. You need a, a smaller setup. Uh, and I would recommend like, you know, like a 20 size reel with like 30 pound braid. And then you're going to vary your, your leaders between 10 and 15 pounds, depending on what you're fishing for. Um, usually for bonefish, permit snook, that's pretty much all you're going to be fishing. And then you're going to have a bigger setup for tarpon. And you're probably going to go and want to go with like 50 pound braid. I had a set of like 35, which is what they recommended at the time. And I got snapped off like four times on tarpon. So I wouldn't go anything less than 50. 65 is just fine. You're going to be fishing these with, they say 60 pound monoliter. We ended up using 80 pound fluorocarbon for almost everything uh, when it came to tarpon. So I would pretty much uh, count on heavier stuff. And it's really just for, for abrasion. Now, as far as when it comes to terminal tackle, uh, you're really just going to be using lead heads for bonefish. Uh, like quarter half ounce lead head and you're gonna be putting uh, dead shrimp on them for the most part but when it comes to tarpon uh, we're using these octopus hooks and anywhere between a three aught and a five aught is what we're using uh, and we're using sardines for bait or if you catch uh, a larger bait fish even a dead one uh, we would just float it with a balloon and uh, they, they'd eat that too so that's all you really need. I mean, uh, you don't need to bring a ton of gear for this type of trip. One thing I'd highly suggest before you go, if you wear glasses, is to make sure that you get your eyes checked and you're wearing uh, your newest prescription glasses. When you're casting for permit, you're gonna be casting quite a distance and you're basically looking for a ripple uh, on the surface of the fish swimming just below. And the second part of that is you need to be able to cast with accuracy, especially if you're using spinning gear. And the reason for that is that if you toss a bait and it doesn't land directly in front of their face, they get spooked and they run off. And that was pretty much your, your, your chance. So, you know, when you're sight fishing for these fish, you know, if you get 15 to 20 chances uh, a day and maybe four or five of those are eagle rays, uh, you, you wanna make sure that you're giving it your best cast. So if that means you gotta practice casting 50 to 100 feet inside a hula hoop in your backyard, then that's what you gotta do. And that's gonna make all the difference in your fishing experience when you're fishing for a permit. So the areas you're gonna be fishing uh, breaks down like this. Pretty much everything to the south is gonna be your bonefish, your tarpon, uh, you know, you, you might pick up some jacks, an occasional permit. Uh, and you're be, you know, this is gonna be, you know, by K Cocker, K Chapel, which is the, a new Four Seasons uh, island that they're developing with the golf course, and then uh, Long K. We had some really good experiences down near Long K and, and Hicks K. Uh, there's a little channel in there that we had some really good opportunities with tarpon at. And then the north section is going to be in Mexico, and that's pretty much just for tarpon fishing. So if you go north, you pretty much commit north for the whole day to fishing for permit in Mexico, and anywhere south is pretty much the rest of the, of the species. So your day basically begins with a little bit of breakfast and then uh, a quick walk down the dock to meet your guide. And you're pretty much already gonna know where you're gonna be fishing, north or south, depending on what you told your guide the night before. Because if you're going north into Mexico, you're gonna need crabs. But if you're heading south, you're gonna be moving into the shallows, trying to catch sardines in a casting net. Now, I would highly recommend bringing some uh, mosquito repellent because once you get into the mangroves, these things get pretty thick and uh, they will definitely track you down even though you were not that close. And I definitely got bit right here a whole bunch on my trip. So the first three days of my trip, I went tarpon fishing and uh, it was really good the first day. I think uh, we hooked six or seven between the two of us. Uh, I lost all of them. <laughs> uh, I, had, I had some issues with the braid that I got spooled up right before the trip and I kept breaking uh, without a whole lot of pressure on it. And then the last one I finally babied ended up being this giant bat ray. Uh, so that was a bummer. But uh, my dad did, did really good. He really enjoyed himself.
looking pretty. Now bone fishing is a little bit different. You're just driving through the flats and you're looking for areas of uh, sandy, cloudy water where the bonefish are feeding on shrimp. And uh, once you find one of those, you just toss out a shrimp on a lead head and kind of just work it. And uh, you can pretty much catch these things all day. There was no shortage of them. Um, the ones we had weren't super giant, but um, they're awfully a lot of fun to catch. And uh, when you're fishing for these, you know, you can hook an, a jack, you, you could hook a, a permit if they're around every once in a while too. But uh, there's definitely no shortage of bonefish. I probably caught 50. The last day of our trip, we ended up heading up into Mexico, into the reserve. Uh, you have to stop and pay a $5 permit fee. Um, and we ended up fishing for a permit. Um, unfortunately, the conditions didn't really work out for us. The cloud cover came in, the wind came up. Uh, so we had a really nice meal cooked by the guides on the beach and uh no one went home hungry that's uh that's for sure but uh ended up being a really nice day and uh on the way back since the fishing wasn't so great we decided to uh stop and check out uh secrets if you've never been to secrets it's this really nice sandy beach and uh they got a bar and tables in the water super fun uh little spot to hang out at have a beer and then uh we headed home so that's El Pescador. If you have any questions or, uh, or comments, feel free to drop a note in the comment section. I'd be happy to answer as many questions as you guys got. Uh, for rates and booking information, reach out to the lodge. Let them know Jeff Newbauer at Chasing Pelagic sent you, and uh, they'll take real good care of you. If you like what you saw today, you can subscribe to our channel or follow us along on Instagram and Facebook. And always remember, share the stoke.